You guys, thank you so much for hopping on here. And Peanuts, thank you guys so much for offering us this opportunity to do this class for all these amazing moms. Today's class is all about infant hacks. And my name is Nina Spears. I am the Baby Chick, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Baby Chick, which is a pregnancy to parenthood resource for the modern mom. I've been helping expecting in new moms for the past 10 years as a baby planner, a birth doula, postpartum doula, childbirth educator, newborn care educator, infant massage instructor, and more. I have helped over 500 families and have personally been to over 260 births as a postpartum doula. And I just feel so honored to have helped so many families in all kinds of settings, in their home, in the hospital, um, at birth centers, and when they bring their little ones home as well. So yeah, I'm excited to share with you guys the tip that I've learned through my training and years of experience helping moms. So today, Infant Hacks, you probably saw on the advertisements some of the things that I'm going to be covering is my really cool hooded, how a hooded towel trick um, for getting baby out of the bathtub that makes things just a little bit easier. I'm going to show you guys how to make formula for the entire day. So if your baby is a formula feeding baby, how you can get that done and then not have to worry about making a whole bottle the rest of the day, um, as well as how to save leaky breast milk if you are breastfeeding, how to do that, um, trimming baby nails. Can we just talk about how scary that is for first time parents? <laughs> trimming those little baby nails, making sure that you don't get their skin. So I'm gonna show you a cool trick on how to do that and making it so much easier for you. Um, what are some other things I'm hoping to go over? Um, a, if you guys haven't seen the cool trick of how to keep baby's hands away from the diaper area when you're changing diapers, I'm gonna show you that trick. How to help a constipated baby constipation happens and it's awful when you see your little one having a hard time uh, with their, their pooping. So some tips on that, how to swaddle a baby. I'm going to show you several swaddles as well as how to swaddle a baby with a muslin blanket or a uh, flannel blanket. And then five soothing tips on how to soothe your baby. So the five S's. So I think that's going to be a lot of material. I'm hoping to not make this too long of a video, but if you have any questions along the way, let us know. Brian is behind the scenes, my husband and co-founder of Baby Chick. He is awesome. He's going to make sure to let me know that whenever you guys have comments or questions, and I'll make sure to stop in between each activity. So if you have anything that we need to address, we can cover it. So awesome, y'all. I think we're ready to go. Three minutes in. Let's do this. We ready, Brian? Let's do it. Let's do it. Awesome. Okay. So first infant hack trick that I show all of my postpartum doula mamas is, you know, you're bathing your baby either in the sink or in the tub with, you know, your infant bathtub. And the worst part for anybody getting out of the shower or bath, even for babies, is when they have to get out of the tub because it's so cold. You want to immediately get bundled up into a towel, right? Your baby wants to do the same thing too. So rather than that awkward transition of putting the towel here, putting baby here, and then quickly wrapping them up and picking them up, I have an easier tip for you. Let me show you. All right. So your baby is super happy taking a bath, but it's time to get out of the bathtub. What you do is, you get your baby's hooded towel. The hooded part of the towel, you have pointing towards the bottom. So you use the opposite corner of the hooded towel and you're gonna place that on your shoulder, okay? So when you're ready to get baby out of the bathtub, you say, all right, baby, straighten it up. Immediately put baby here, grab the hood, swoop it, and you have baby already bundled up in the towel. How quick and easy is that? What I love about that is mom doesn't get wet because you have the towel already on you and baby doesn't have to endure the whole trying to get bundled up, the air kind of flowing as you bundle them after getting out of the tub. So that is just a really cool, easy trick. Again, putting the hooded part at the bottom, put that on your chest and just swoop up, 
put it on baby's head, you are good to go. Pretty cool, right? All right, guys, I'm gonna show you my next trick. I feel like that one's pretty self-explanatory, so I don't expect people to have a lot of questions with that one. So we're gonna move to the next infant hack to make mom and dad's life so much easier. Okay, and that's making infant formula for the entire day. Rather than having to do bottle per bottle each time, I'm gonna show you how to do it for the entire day. So come on this way. Okay, when you're ready, first things first, always when you're dealing with baby's food or when you're cooking for yourself is wash your hands, right? 20 seconds, warm soapy water, all that stuff, dry, you're good to go. You get your bottles out for how many bottles your baby is going to eat within, you know, the next 24 hours, okay? So I'm just going to do three because I don't have my, my guy is two and a half. He's not drinking from the bottle anymore. He's not having formula. Um, so I'm going to just show three. But if your baby needs eight bottles, you know, however many, get them all lined up. And this is what you do. First, you are going to, let's say, all right, your baby um, has five ounces or four ounces or six ounces. You're going to make sure that always you use the correct amount of water with formula, with the formula that you're using. So there's different kinds of formula, there's concentrate, there's ready to serve, and there's powder. So I'm gonna do uh, the more popular one, which is powder, um, and showing you how to do that um, for a full day. Let me know if I need to slow down or if you guys have questions along the way. So first things first. So I'm gonna say my baby has, I'm just gonna make it around number six ounces per bottle feeding, okay? So what I do, is I'm gonna fill this up, six ounces each time. Okay, so six ounces. And again, I'm just doing three bottles. So do put as many you know times in your bowl as how many bottles that you need to make. Okay. So and what I recommend is so if you need to make six bottles, put six bottles of water exactly. in the bowl. Six bottles of however many ounces that you need to make for your little one. So I'm doing, like I said, if my baby is drinking six ounces per feeding. I'm doing then three six ounces, so 18 ounces into my bowl. Okay. And I recommend if you have already filtered water, um, you know, something that's safe and clean, great, use that. But if you don't want to do that and you want, um, or you don't have that available to you, you can definitely use um, your tap water. But after doing that, I'll show you the next thing you need to do. Okay, so you poured all the water that you need for um, your baby's bottles. What you would do after that is you would then boil it. You would make sure that it is hot and killing off anything that um, is in your tap water that shouldn't be there for your baby to consume, um, and you boil it for a minute. So we're gonna do like TV magic. <laughs> so you pour it in here, turn it up, have it boil, boil for a minute. Once you're done, put it back here, and then you're ready for the next step. You can actually um, let it cool if you'd like, or you can start putting um, the formula immediately. So um, another thing is normally, as parents know, with you know making per bottles, you always put the liquid first in the bottle and then you do the powder because you need to make sure that you have the right amount of water to, um, to formula. So with this, you could then, um, you could always do Actually, I had a client who she would uh, make sure I was her postpartum doula. So I would do uh, scoops and I would put them in tightly sealed containers and I would do the amount of scoops that she needed per day to do this every night. So all she had to do rather than do these scoops and put it into her bowl of water is she would just open that container because she knew I already did the measurements um, and then just pour, uh, pour it in that bowl of water that she needed for her bottles and then start mixing. So, but for, for our demonstration, I'm going to show you again, always use the measuring tool that is in your formula. Cause you want to, again, make sure that you're getting the right amount of nutrition um, with the water. So I'm going to do, so six 
So because it's six ounces, my formula says that I need to do two scoops per, um, right? It's two scoops. So I need to do three, three scoops for my um, six ounces. So that's one, two, three. Okay, so that's for one bottle. So I'm doing three bottles, one, two, three. Okay, one more bottle, because I'm only doing three. One, two, three. Awesome. Okay. And the reason why I like doing this all in one day, not only does it make it easier for you, but it also, because we're mixing it this way rather than shaking it, we're getting a lot of those bubbles out of the, the formula. So then you know, when you're shaking it, it causes a lot of bubbles sometimes, and that can cause, you know, tummy problems, a lot of gas. Um, so doing it this way can relieve some of that, which is really great. So the next step, I'm going to move this so you can see, is get like a whisk or a spoon, and you want to make sure that the formula and the water is completely blended. You don't want to have any clumps or anything sitting in there. Want it to be blended perfectly. Okay, I think that's pretty good. All right, so my next step is then putting it in the bottles, right? So I'm gonna get my bottles ready. <laughs> Obviously make sure that your bottles are clean and sanitized, especially if it's a first time use, I recommend boiling them for three minutes each um, to get them really sanitized. Great. Okay, so I have all my bottles ready to go. And then carefully pour this, again, I was doing six ounces per, so. Oh, of course I'm gonna do this. I, I, I sorry y'all, it's gonna be a little more. Complicated. Actually, I should do a funnel. That would be smart. Sorry, you guys. If I can find my funnel. Actually, I think I have a funnel up here. It's an orange one, but I can't reach it. Sorry, y'all. We're going to just make do you get the picture. I recommend that a funnel if your, you know, thing isn't pouring well in here, which mine isn't. Oh, I feel so bad. We'll just pretend it's going in there perfectly. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, you guys, I recommend a funnel. Mine work. Normally I have like little, little things in here and it's a lot easier. Okay. So basically what you do from that is you fill up all your bottles, right? and then close them up, and then you store them in your fridge. So you store all eight of them once you have them poured. Again, I recommend a funnel. <laughs> Normally I have like something to, to put it in, but I couldn't find it. So then you put them not, I don't recommend putting them on your door of your fridge because every time you open it, it's getting exposed to warmer temperatures. So keep it towards the back. So, and it is good to stay in there in the fridge formula for 24 hours. So when you have all of those eight bottles, six bottles, whatever, you're good to go. So what I normally do with my clients is we would have, I would just scoop up, put them in containers or plastic baggies of the amount of formula. And then all she would have to do is pour that in the water once it was like, if she already had um, clean water or if she boiled it already, she would just mix it up, pour it, in here and then put all of them in the fridge. So then the next day, whenever baby was ready, she would just warm it up or you can serve it cold. You know, it's just uh, whatever your baby prefers and then um, you're ready to go. And then so each night you can do that and it makes it so much easier. And each bottle is only 24 hours. Yes, each bottle is only 24 hours in the fridge. Once you take it out of the fridge and baby is eating it, needs to really be consumed within like the, the first four hours, because once saliva touches that, bacteria is introduced. So um, once baby eats that, it needs to really be um, 
eaten at that point. Otherwise, we need to throw it out. But the rest, as long as they're staying in the fridge, you are good for 24 hours, which is so cool. So Hannah raised her hand. Yes, Hannah. Hopefully this works. <laughs> Okay, now it says no raised hands. Oh. If you have a question, Hannah, just, oh, okay. She says, sorry, I didn't mean to. No worries. <laughs> awesome. I hope that made sense. I'm not going to do all eight bottles and, but yes, it makes things so much easier for parents rather than, um, you know, just doing it right then and there. If that works for you, great. But if you are just like, I am tight on time, I just want everything ready, or maybe, um, you know, your partner's going to help and you don't want someone to maybe you're just really really tired and you want to make sure that you're not putting too many scoops or too few scoops in the water this is just a great way to make it really easy for everyone so I hope that was helpful so you can make your formula all at once let me know if you guys have any questions if not we're gonna to go to our next infant hack okay all right we're gonna make our way over there it's gonna to be towards the couch and then we're pretty much gonna stay in that area so welcome to my house <laughs> okay, so leaking boobs, so let me grab my baby. All right, for the mamas, you know, I wanted to show a tip for the mamas that were um, formula feeding, so that was my tip for formula feeding moms, and this is my tip for breastfeeding mamas. Okay, so I breastfed my son for seven months um, and something that brand new moms may not know is that when you are nursing on one side, even though baby is sucking and eating from this side, you are still leaking on the other breast and it's soaking up in your uh, nursing pad. So, <laughs> I'm all about like every drop counts. Let's save every bit because I was not a fan of pumping. I just loathe pumping, even though I did a lot of pumping during my breastfeeding journey. So, but I made sure that if I could save every ounce, I was going to do it. So I wanted to show you guys some really cool products that I really recommend. Okay. So one is the Milk Saver from Milkies. And what's cool about this is what I would do is when I um, would feed my son and latch him on, I would then put this in my bra and it has an open area for where you put your nipple in and it has this little spot to make sure that it presses up because if your breast were to go up in it, it would just close. So it has this little plastic spot. And so you would put this in and I would then clip my bra on and just have it hang out while I would nurse. And I will say that in the middle of the night, I would do that. So even if I were sideline, so, cause moms, if you're not sideline when you're breastfeeding in the middle of the night, you've got to, you've got to learn how to do it. It will give you like that much more energy the next day. I highly, highly recommend it. So I'm going to show you that. If you are breastfeeding at night, you bring your baby to your bottom breast, tummy to tummy, nose to nipple, you can like then rest. And I would do, what I would do is I would put this like this so it wouldn't spill <laughs> in my, um, on my baby. And I would do it like this and it would catch um, my breast milk while I rested and my little guy nursed in the middle of the night. And what was so cool is with each feeding, I would get about one to two ounces. One to two ounces. I mean, that is awesome. So at the, at the end of the night, I would get, I would get sometimes like five to eight ounces and that is like a whole feeding. Um, so I, I just loved that. I thought it was so cool and I definitely recommend to moms. So this is the Milk Saver Milkies. I'm not getting paid for this advertisement. I legitimate did it myself <laughs> she did um so another really cool thing um that i recommend my clients is if you want even more milk than just that um you can use the haka so it's spelled i don't know if it's on this thing um you can barely see it it's h-a-a-k-a-a -A -A, haka 
And so this is a silicone breast pump. And so if you are nursing your little one, it's kind of like the same thing with the milkies. You can, you know, be nursing your little one if you want to nurse like this. And what you do is pretty much the same thing like that, is you invert it, you place it on your breast, and then let it cup around. And then you squeeze it, and make sure you squeeze it till you get the right amount of suction. And then it'll kind of stay on there. You may just want to make sure. Shannon says that thing is a lifesaver. It is the right, Shannon. It is the coolest thing. And that's why I feel like every mom needs to know. So not only are you like collecting your, your breast milk, I like I said, I would get probably like one, maybe two ounces. With this guy, I would get like two, three, sometimes four ounces. I mean, it was so, so cool. So again, just not having to plug in and with your breast pump um, and, and catch from the other side while your, your baby's feeding on this one. Why not? It makes things so much better because again, otherwise it's going to be just soaking into your, your nursing pad. And I would just cry when it would be full of milk because I was like, ah, oh, I could have used all of that. But anyway, so that is my tip on how to save leaky breast milk and ultimately have more food for your little one and less pumping for mama, which is great. I didn't really have to start pumping until, because I did that from like the get go and I didn't have to start pumping until probably my child was three or four months old because I had plenty of milk from, from that. And it was so, so awesome. Okay. All right, guys, any questions so far before I head to the next thing? We're good. Awesome. Okay. I hope you guys are enjoying these, learning something new. All right. So the next thing is how to avoid baby spit up. Okay. So it's not 100% avoid baby spit up, but it can really help reduce the chances of baby spitting up. All right. So if you are, the thing is with, with nursing, if you have a fast letdown, I mean, just make sure that you um, release baby every now and then to, to and burp frequently um, to make sure that baby is, you know, taking, is, is not overfeeding. Because really, an overfed baby is a big reason why they spit up because they just took in too much that their tiny tummy can't take. So, um, so with nursing, it's actually um, a lot harder to have um, as much spit up unless you just have a really fast um, letdown. So, um, but with bottle feeding, it can be a lot easier because the flow tends to be a lot faster. They can regulate your breast a little bit easier than they can a bottle. So first things with bottle fed babies, I still love a uh, breastfeeding pillow even when I'm bottle feeding. I, it just helps support my arm. And all it was that. even helpful for me. Yeah. Yeah. I know my husband, Brian, you were like, I need one of those. I need my own. Get your own. <laughs> so, um, what I recommend is when you're feeding a baby, never have the baby laying down like this. Um, because that's going to come right back up. So I usually recommend a good 45 degree angle when you are feeding your baby. Another thing is it's not feeding the baby like this either. You want to have, um, you know, the, the bottle level. If it's like this, it's just probably drip, 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 drip. Um, you want the, the bottle level at that point. Okay. So after the baby has fed, again, I usually do, depending on baby's age, it's kind of differs, but for like a newborn, every ounce to two ounces, I pull off the bottle and then I, where's my Okay, and then I bring baby here and begin begin burping. Okay, and mamas know it's this isn't gonna do anything. <laughs> you need to do not like beating your baby, but like a good <laughs> a good pack to try and get that those bubbles up. Even upward strokes can help, and even getting up and walking around that movement can help get that burp out. So usually that will, that will really help. And then another thing is after they're finished with their feeding, keep them upright for about 10 minutes. Um, because if you immediately lay them down flat, that 
that feeding can work its way up. So keep them at an incline. Yes, question. So Hannah asks, yeah. how often should you burp when breastfeeding? My baby spits up a lot. Yes, how often? So that's a great question. Um, again, it's I, I, it really depends on the client that I'm working with because I don't know how much milk you're producing per feeding. Um, usually you would be able to know that, you know, if you're um, pumping here and there, you'll be able to say like, okay, per feeding I'm, I'm pumping about um, two ounces, um, that sort of thing. So with that, I always say a, a nursing session should really be no longer than 15 minutes. Baby is getting everything baby needs, 15 minutes. So if you have, let's say, a fast letdown, I would say probably every five minutes, probably break section, um, burp. But if baby is ravenous and is not having it, like put baby back up, put baby back on, um, that, can, that can really help. If that does not help, another thing that you may want to look into is your diet. It could be something that you're eating that baby is just not um, sitting well with. So um, a lot of people immediately go to removing dairy out of their diet. But I mean, I had a mom where um, the baby was spitting up a lot that day and we thought about it and we uh, went over her diet that she had the day before and she had spaghetti and she had tomato sauce. And I said, oh, that red marinara sauce, the tomatoes, that acidity can really upset baby. So let's maybe not have any... Um, tomatoes or any uh, anything that has that acid and see how baby does after that and sure enough that really helped so there are several things that you could look into but with with nursing really really babies are really good at kind of regulating how much they need to nurse but um if you notice that your baby's um is is spitting up a lot maybe kind of pull them away after you know every five minutes and then begin burping and burping doesn't need to be like 10 minutes long. It's really just like two to five minutes. Um, if you don't get something out, then move on. And I will say that um, breastfeeding babies don't, uh, don't burp as much because they're not getting as much air um, as they would with a uh, formula and a bottle that they can get a lot more air in. So, um, so yeah, so that is um, how to avoid. So again, I said after feeding, having them sit up in that 45 degree angle or having them sit up with you holding them for at least 10 minutes um, will help kind of get that feeding settled in their tummy and reducing their chances of spitting up as much. So those are my tips on how to avoid as much spit up with your little one. The diet, the feeding with the bottle, burping regularly, um, and, and sitting up uh, 10, 15 minutes afterwards as well. So. All right, guys, any questions? Great one though, so far, Hannah, thank you. Um, okay, so we're gonna move on to my next infant hack. And this is the one that honestly, as a postpartum doula, all of my clients basically make me do as soon as I walk in their door. <laughs> it's trimming baby's nails. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys something. Whenever I'm trimming baby's nails, I will tell you from, from all of my I've tried so many different nail trimmers. And the clippers, I'm not as big of a fan of because when you're clipping a baby's nails, you're basically having to pray that you're not gonna get some of the skin. And I cannot tell you how many times I've seen baby's fingers bleeding um, because you know, uh, mom or dad or grandma got some of the skin um, while they were clipping the nails. So what I actually prefer is a nail scissors, a baby nail scissors. And I know that this can be a little bit scarier, but I promise once you like use it and know how to use it, it's so much easier. And I will explain why. Okay, so when you're ready to, uh, when you're ready to trim a baby's nails, I also recommend that baby needs to be in your lap. I still, with my two-year-old, I make him sit either next to me, but he needs to be close to me so I can put my body around him and get his nails. So the reason why I do this is it's easier to get their hand. And remember y'all, you are stronger than your baby. So hold on, hold on. So then they don't, they don't move. And you get your uh, scissors. And the great thing is you can control when you're gonna go around and cut rather than just like a clipper and you just click, click, 
clip. This, you can really, if you just wanna do one little corner first and then the top and then the side, you can do that. People have said, oh my gosh, this is such an easier trick. And when baby is against you, you have control of them. You know, you, they have a harder time rolling away from you or if they're sleeping and you're trying to do a nails. Also trying to cut this way isn't as easy as if you're trying to cut your own nail. So having them facing the same direction that you are up against you, you controlling their body, you holding their hand, and then being able to slowly trim their nails, it will make things so much easier. And that way you'll be able to actually trim it a lot closer. Um, because again, some I've seen people where, yes, they'll either trim the skin or they barely cut the nail and they just try to file as much as possible. And um, you get a really good cut, you barely have to file after that. So it's a lot easier when you have full body control and can trim all the way around. If any mamas can have experienced uh, baby nail scissors, let me know, but I, I swear by it, I give a gift um, to my friends who have babies <laughs> this because it's so much easier and not as scary when you're trimming baby's nails. Let me know if you guys have any questions or if I'm going too fast. I tend to talk really quickly and try and slow down. But after that, I'm gonna show you guys my next trick, which is keeping baby's hands away while you are changing their diaper. Can we just talk about how changing a baby's diaper can sometimes feel like you're wrestling an alligator? Or is that just my toddler? <laughs> but this trick is really more helpful for the younger ones, obviously not so much for a toddler, but little ones that are wearing um, onesies like this still. Okay. We'll just pretend like this is clipped. Okay, so when you're ready to change your baby's diaper, you get your mat out, right? And this is what we use with our son, so it's seen better days. <laughs> but you get your mat out, okay, hi baby. And what you do to keep baby's hands away, again, maybe have seen this trick, but I love it. I think it's so, so helpful. Is normally you just put this up and change baby's diaper, but then they're like all over the place getting, you know, getting into trouble and you're trying to keep them still and change them. Well, this is a really cool trick. When they have a onesie, put their hands inside the onesie. You see these three clips or clasps you clip them right here. Again, my baby's arms aren't as pliable as like a, a newborn, but usually you only need like two. You don't have to do all three. And then you can easily change baby's diapers and their hands are then not all up in your space. How cool is that? So much easier. And if you have some of those um, gowns, you can do the same thing. Those gowns, you know what I'm talking about, you guys that, you know, just have a hole, they're longer and they have a hole at the end. Just roll them up, roll them up and tuck baby's arms in and continue to roll up. It will just help you avoid having baby's hands in the area where you need to be changing them. Super cool, right? I love that trick. Makes diaper changes so much easier. That only worked for toddlers. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying this. I wish I could like talk to y'all. Normally I do like live classes. And so I hope you guys are enjoying this or finding some helpful tips. Yep, I just saw one. Some, I, I missed the name, but it said, uh, said, thank you, love this. Awesome, I appreciate that. I was like, I need And Hannah to says, super helpful, thank you. Oh, perfect, great. Okay, so that was my um, keeping hands out of the way. Okay. Baby constipation, oh my goodness, not fun whatsoever. So the first thing with baby constipation um, that you need to be thinking about is are they eating enough? I.e. like staying hydrated because fluids are super, super, super important. So making sure that they're eating enough throughout the day to really pass things. Um, and also, so breastfeeding, 
are they eating enough? And then bottle feeding, are you getting enough water with the amount of scoops that you're doing? Are they having enough bottles? So hydration is one of the first things that we need to pay attention to. Okay, another thing that I show all of my clients um, when they bring their babies home is how to do infant massage. And there are actually some things that you can do to really help with their tummy. So there are some exercises first that you can do. So the big one that I'm sure um, our veteran moms know is the bicycles. So doing the bicycles with your baby's legs. And again, my baby is plastic, so it's a little harder to bend <laughs> baby's legs. But doing that bicycle, that circular motion can really help move things down. And then another motion is getting their, their um, legs and bringing their knees to their chest. So you would do this with both um, legs, but I can't really do it. Um, but knee to chest and then back straight out. Knee to chest, back straight out, but with both legs. So bringing back and forward, back and forward, and then bicycles with the legs to help move things along. Um, so here are my tummy massage tricks that I definitely recommend. So the first thing is you are gonna do some swiping motions down. You're gonna, if you have, if you have some uh, baby lotion or uh, baby oil or anything that's safe for baby, put that on your hands first. Um, and then you're gonna do that downward motion, right? You're not gonna go all the way to the nipple. You really go below the rib cage and then down below the rib cage, kind of move baby's legs down a little bit. Below the rib cage and down. And you're not gonna do it lightly, but you're not gonna do it firm. It's like a good medium pressure, okay? Okay, so downwards. The next movement that you're gonna do after that is around the clock. So I usually do either two fingers, it depends on how old your baby is, or my thumb and you wanna go around the belly button clockwise because this is how the intestines works. It goes this way and digests in that motion. So if we go the opposite way, we're actually clogging things. <laughs> so you want things to pass in the right motion. So around the clock. And again, that medium pressure when you're doing that for baby. And then the next one is called a pulling. Again, you're gonna start below the rib cage and you're gonna go from the center and then pull outward. Pull outward, pull outward, pull outward. So you'll do that a couple of times. So again, mixing that up, doing the bicycles, the in and the out with the knees, and then paddle strokes around the clock and then pulling. Do that two or three times and that should hopefully relieve baby and make baby feel a lot better. Okay, so another cool trick that I don't have the product with me and I'm bummed, but it's called uh, the Windy from Frida Baby and parents swear by it. What you do, it can be a little intimidating, <laughs> but I promise it's not, very, it's not scary and it's not gonna hurt baby. It's this little plastic, or not plastic, it's like silicone plastic um, applicator that you insert into baby's bottom and it will release the air from baby's bowels. And so you should hear after you insert it, maybe after a couple of seconds, you'll hear a whistle. And that's the air that's being relieved from baby's intestines. And I've even had, when I've inserted it, more than just air coming out and baby feels so much better. So that's another cool um, product that can help out. It's called the Windy, W-I-N-D-I from Frida Baby. It can really help with gassy uh, tummy issues. So, and I will say with those bicycles and doing the knees to the tummy, I'll usually hear a toot here and there from the baby as well, because it's just helping move things along. So um, that can help uh, with a constipated baby as well. So I hope this is helpful, you guys. Constipation is not fun, even for our little ones. Isn't it just the worst when you see your babies in pain and you feel like you can't do anything? There's nothing you can do. Okay. If you guys don't have any questions, I'm going to move on to my next tip.
I hope this is good. I hope you guys are enjoying it. I'm gonna show you guys some different swaddles that you can use um, that um, are pretty, I don't know, pretty standard, pretty um, what I see in most people's houses. So um, I'm gonna show you two kind of like ready swaddles and then how to do a swaddle with like a regular muslin blanket. So, okay, you guys, with a swaddle, I highly recommend swaddling baby. I know that people say, oh, my baby hates to be swaddled, but every baby that I've ever worked with, if I swaddle them good with a good blanket, they usually sleep extremely well. And really it's because it's the tightness that they need around their arms and chest. You have to remember when they were in utero, there wasn't a lot of room. They were really squished up in a ball in there. There was not much room and that was so cozy and safe and warm for them. Um, so, so being able to get back in that swallow can really emulate that environment and make them feel so much cozier and safer and usually a lot happier um, with sleeping time. So giving mom um, a little bit longer of a nap or bedtime sleep. So I'm going to show you two swaddles um, that people love. This one, Brian, was your favorite, wasn't it? I think so. <laughs> so this is the love to dream. A lot of people like this one because it's super simple with a zip. Um, and it has a zipper on both sides. So if you have to change them in the middle of the night, you don't have to mess with their arms. That really was the easiest one. Yeah. And so dads usually like this one a lot. So um, you'll place your baby in here, zip up, and then baby's hands go up here. Because a lot of times babies, um, when they're swaddled, they immediately want their arms to go like this and spread out because um, all babies have the moral reflex and the moral reflex is the startle reflex which it's not the startle reflex is not a bad thing mm. however a lot of parents um, think of it as a bad thing because when babies startle it'll wake them up and then they need to be soothed back to sleep and so parents are like oh so that's why having a tight model can avoid them having that moral reflex and allow them to sleep longer so this one but some people really like the moral reflex because um that helps prevent SIDS and all of that so Okay, so this is a great swaddle. It keeps baby nice and snug um, and keeps, keeps hands um, away from their face, um, but it gives them the mobility. The big thing is making sure that they have plenty of hip movement. Um, some swaddles, when you swaddle a baby, if you do it too tight on their hips, it's not hip healthy. And we wanna make sure that they have plenty of movement in their legs and their hips. And yeah, it's nice because they can't get out of it no matter you don't have to do a a good swaddle and yeah. then you know they're out of it yeah. in an hour yeah breaking out of it for sure so this is the love to dream that a lot of parents do love um this over here is the swaddle me so the swaddle me is um kind of an in-between of a you know regular muslin and something similar to like that so it has like a little pouch and you'll place baby here on the neck line is where you'll put the baby's um, swaddle you'll pull this up you'll see that there's this velcro right here and what you're gonna do is you'll make sure to hold baby's arms down because they're usually moving around trying to get their hands to their mouth normally um, you'll hold baby's arms down Pull this side, Velcro it to make sure that baby's arms stay down. Tuck this under baby. Pull this side over and you'll see that it has Velcro here and you put this right here. This makes it a lot easier um, to get that tight swaddle. Um, what the love to dream is allowing the arms up um, which is a fine option, but for people who are really wanting that tighter, um, that tighter swaddle, 
but I uh, want to avoid using a blanket that they have to self swaddle. This is a great alternative. Again, this is called the Swaddle Me. I believe it's from Summer Infant. I think it's the brand. So that's a really easy way. Um, and yeah, not very many babies can break out of that. Yeah, no, I think I remember we used something like that too, right? Because I feel like we did, and, we and that did. was easy. Yeah, we did. We, the we tough used... one is just make, making the swaddle out of a blanket. Yeah, well, I tended to prefer the swaddle out of the blanket, but for Brian, for sure, he liked the Well, once you, once you do it a few times, yeah, you kind of get the hang of it, but yeah. I also had you to help me, and, <laughs> and not, not everybody of, knows. Yeah, not everyone um, yeah, has the, the support of, like, no, you can make it tighter, or or no, that's a little too tight on the hips and that sort of thing. Well, just to show you in person how to do it. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so I wanted to show you two different blankets. So you'll probably see, um, these were actually the blankets that I used for when my son was born. Um, you'll probably get something similar to this at the hospital. They have like those white blankets with the pink and blue stripes. They're like the flannel blankets. Um, so that's one blanket option. And then muslin blankets. These are super popular. Um, they have been for years, really lightweight. Um, and people particularly like them because um, they're safe for babies. So um, baby can breathe through them, breathable, um, very soft. They've just been a big hit for, for quite a while. So I'm gonna show you how to do it with, um, since they're both blankets, I'm gonna show you how to do it with the muslin blanket since I tend to see more of these in people's homes. So I'm gonna show you how to swaddle your baby with a muslin blanket. So, all right, I'm gonna stand up for y'all. So you have, muslin blankets are usually really, really large. And I like that because it can grow with your baby. So when you have a newborn, typically, you're going to want to fold it in half like a diamond, right? So you get the two points at the end and you have a diamond shape. And then what you do is you lie this down like this. Okay. The reason why uh, it's a diamond shape is you probably don't need as much room for the bottom part. Since my baby looks kind of long, I'm actually gonna make this a little longer at the bottom, meaning I'm gonna bring this up a little bit so it's not perfectly meeting um, corner to corner. I'm gonna make it a little longer. Let me know if you guys have any problems seeing everything. Oh, I'm just having my rear end. Okay, so same thing with this swaddle uh, that I was showing you with the swaddle meat. You're gonna place baby's neck at the line of the blanket in the center of your diamond muslin blanket. Okay, same thing with the swaddle meat before. You're gonna make sure you hold down baby's arms and chest and you're gonna bring this over, this whole side over, and you're gonna tuck it under baby's and you see how I kind of use my forearm a little bit to make sure, because when I bring this over, let me show you again. When I bring this over, I'm holding baby's arms and chest down, and then I bring this over and I kind of use my forearm to continue holding down so baby doesn't magically sneak that arm up. And I tightly put this under baby, but I make sure that not around the hips, I just really around that chest, upper chest area. It's really nice and firm. Okay. After that, I bring the bottom material up. And if you have plenty, you put it over the shoulder and tuck it around the side. The next part is getting this part of the blanket kind of like a seat belt. Click it right here in the middle to create like that V and then use the rest of the material to go around baby. And I'm always using like my forearm or whatever to make sure that baby stays nice and snug. And then the rest of the material you just bring in right here. So if you can't tell, this is a pretty snug swaddle. And the swaddles that I do with little ones, I always tell parents, don't be afraid to 
I mean, obviously don't like hurt them <laughs> when, you're, when you're doing a swaddle, but don't be afraid to do a good tight swaddle. Um, dads tend to be really, um, really good at it because um, they're, you know, putting in that elbow grease. <laughs> uh, but again, not too tight around the hips and the legs. We want to make sure that they have free motion um, and that it's hip healthy, but it's really all about keeping their hands right in this direction and that um, nice tight swaddle. So it's pretty difficult to get out of um, the swaddle like that. So I hope you found that helpful. Again, if this is something that you just don't feel confident doing, really practice makes perfect. Just keep practicing. You can do it. And if you still just feel like you can't do it, that's okay. Uh, you can find some other alternatives like I showed you the swaddle me or the love to dream and you might find something that your child would prefer. So I hope you guys enjoyed that those tricks because I promise when you can swaddle your baby and your baby can sleep longer, oh, mama feels so much better. So all right you guys along with babies swaddling so I'm gonna go on to my you know the ways to soothe a baby. So if you don't have any questions, make sure you let us know if you uh, have any comments or questions. Okay, so the five the five S's um, are developed by you know or written by Dr. Harvey Karp, and the five S's are swaddling, shushing, sucking, side lying, and swinging. And I normally recommend that you do not don't do one at a time. Try and do as many as you can. Hey, so we do have a question. Awesome. What was the swaddle with the stars called? Uh, this one, it's the love to dream. It's the love to dream. We use this one a lot with our son. Um, Brian, you found it. Yeah, those were easier. nice. Especially in the middle of the night. Um, uh, Brian was awesome. We had kind of this deal that because we were breast. I, we were breastfeeding, <laughs> I was breastfeeding our son, um, that I would do all the feedings and he could do all the diapers. So because he would do all the diapers at night, um, he was the one that really got to choose what swaddle was best for him because he was the one dealing with that. So we tended, to, he tended to choose this one. So it was a lot easier. So we're very familiar with this swaddle, um, the love to dream and, and really enjoy it. So, and Bianca had a question that yeah. it looks like I'd missed. Yeah. Um, around what age does spit up tend to happen less often? Less often when they're um, when they're just when they're able to sit up a little bit more, um, have that head neck control. Um, usually, when that strength, um, that core develops, it's it's a lot less often, um, and that's usually around like three months, four months around that point. Three four months old, um, it should be going down significantly. And then uh, someone said, our baby boy is five months and all of a sudden became super irritable, oh. started protesting naps, doesn't sleep well through the night, and doesn't eat as much throughout the day. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's well, – I'm so sorry to hear that. At five months, that's really, really interesting. Um, I'm sure you've talked to your pediatrician about this. Um, I would definitely consider if, – if you talk to the pediatrician and you kind of – knocked out some things of like what that could be if you know are they in pain like what what is he ex you know what is he upset about you know what is it that's um, hurting him is it tummy issues you know um figuring out what that is uh with your pediatrician would be is what i recommend if not definitely then talking to a sleep consultant and i know that bringing up sleep consultants people immediately are like ah, sleep consultants you know they're the devil some people are like that um but actually you know if you do your research there are some great sleep consultants out there that do really gentle um, plans for parents that work best for their child so you can consult them and kind of talk to them about you know the issues that you're having with sleep and they can work up a plan that can work for your family um, to get more sleep so um, I would need to know a lot more details uh, to be able to give you some recommendations of what would work specifically for your son but my my prayers are and well wishes are with you and I hope your little guy feels better and gets better soon so, okay, these, these are great questions. Thanks, guys. I love having some kind of dialogue with you guys. This, is, this makes it a lot more fun for me. Okay, so I was talking about the five S's. So I am all about, like, 
you know, having to soothe the baby, especially when you're just so tired um, because, you know, you're not getting much sleep when you have a newborn. So the things I, I listed them, the swaddling, sucking, swaying, um, shushing and um, sidelining are the five S's. And so what I was mentioning before is normally it's, you know, maybe just popping a pacifier. If you're okay with pacifiers and you want to use a pacifier with your little one, um, just pop a pacifier with your little one, okay? And maybe that will calm your little one. But don't be afraid to use all of them, <laughs> all five of them to, to soothe your, your baby because sometimes I'll have a baby where all I have to do is swallow them and they immediately calm down and are feeling much better. But some babies need a few extra things. So I'll usually do, you know, if parents are okay with a pacifier, um, I'll usually do a pacifier, a swaddle, um, I'll then get up and move, um, and then sideline. I do, I hold baby in kind of like this, like a football hold kind of position. Um, Cause like this, if they have especially like tummy troubles, that can really bother their, their tummy. So sometimes just sleeping, I usually have my hands like between them. <laughs> my baby's a little longer, it's a doll. So um, I usually do this and uh, swing baby. And then the last part is shushing. And people need to understand that when they were in the womb, baby heard like a vacuum cleaner 24 seven with like your blood and your breathing and your talking and the lymph everything circulating through your body, it was extremely loud and it sounded like a vacuum cleaner, like constantly. And that's why babies actually really like the sound of white noise because it sounds similar to what they were hearing when they were in the womb. So if baby is sucking on a pacifier, to uh, totally swaddled up, you're doing sideline and even doing the swinging or putting baby in a swing, getting baby close up, and in their ear, emulate the, the volume that they're crying. So if they're like, wah, wah, then you go, shh, shh, But if they're wailing, you need to kind of be at that decibel too. So it may sound obnoxious, but it, it makes them realize, okay, I, I, I'm figuring out there's something else trying to calm me down. All these sensations are gonna help soothe your baby. So shh and eventually baby should calm down. So sometimes if baby's just all worked up, obviously check the things before you do all this. Has baby eaten? Has baby burped? Does baby have a clean diaper? If all of baby's needs are met, they're warm or you know cold or whatever, make sure they're comfortable. If all of those needs are met and they're still screaming and unhappy, these five S's should really, really help. And if you're out and about um, on the go, not that we're on the go right now, <laughs> We're all, we're all at home staying safe. But if you, you know, whenever we are able to leave the house and maybe baby's in a car seat and screaming and um, you know, I, what I would do when I was with my clients, baby would be in the car seat and I would hold the car seat like um, handle and I would just swing. I would swing the baby <laughs> like it was a, a swing at home. And a lot of times with the pacifier, if I had a portable um, sound machine, white noise machine, I would put it in their, um, in their car seat just to calm them down and then I would swing them. If you were on the go and you didn't want to have to get them out of the car seat and that sort of thing. So that tip really helped out. So um, I can usually get a baby to really calm down after a little bit, after I make sure that all the other needs have been met. So. You guys, that was it. What time is it? It's been an hour. Perfect timing. Wanted to make sure I didn't you know, go over. It was too long of a class. But y'all, I hope you found this as helpful um, as possible. I hope you guys learned a few new things that you didn't know about before. These are things that have really helped my clients and our family when we had a little one. Um, again, having helped hundreds of families, I've seen what really helps with different families. Oh, and I think it was Shannon who said that she has a little one at home with a new baby. I wanted to give a tip, but I think we have a question. Brian, is that right? Yes. Awesome.
Maybe not. <laughs> no, we do. It's in here. <laughs> okay, awesome. Any tips uh, for early teethers? My three-month-old is already trying to cut her first teeth and is miserable. A lot of tricks we use for my son like frozen celery sticks she's too young for yeah so what i would do is frozen breast milk like lollipop like popsicles if you can freeze some of your um like put it in um like you can do those ice um what are those ice tins um or like popsicle tins obviously like little baby ones um not like big popsicle ones but little ones With the and trays put, yeah the trays and then put like some something safe um you know a little uh, something that they can grab onto um and and that can be a celery stick or a carrot or whatever um put that in in there and and then once it's unfrozen baby can gnaw on um, on that breast milk. So I highly recommend like a breast milk pop um, to gnaw on that can really soothe those, those irritated gums, poor thing. Another product that I really like and recommend and it's natural, it's called Wink. Wink is really helpful. It's um, this like um, su substance, like a gel that you rub on their teeth, all natural, and it can, it can help them feel better. Another thing, it sounds a little hippie, but some people swear by them is amber teething necklaces. Having that, not, not having them too long, they need to be not like a choker, but, you know, um, close enough and getting an amber teething necklace for, for babies to wear. We had it on our son and I, I believe it did help. Um, and I didn't care if people thought it was silly. I was like, he's happy. That's all that matters. <laughs> so those hopefully will help you um, with your little one teething so early. Awesome. Okay. Yes. And I wanted to get, uh, I believe Shannon said that she had a, a toddler and a basically newborn. So something that I wanted to share a tip just for you is you know, a, a lot of times when I come into parents' homes, they have a hard time when it's time to feed baby um, and they have their toddler because the toddler starts getting, you know, a little uh, jealous and um, really wanting more of mom's time. And that's to be expected and so normal. So what I recommend for parents is to make a, like, breastfeeding or bottle feeding or whatever, however you're feeding your baby, make a feeding box but for your toddler. And that box has like some new toys or maybe you do toy, toy rotation in your house, some different toys that are in that box that they really love, but they can only play with those toys when you are feeding your new baby. So I call that the feeding box. So whenever I would be, um, as a postpartum doula, whenever I would go into a family's house and mom was getting ready to nurse, you know, um, she would then, uh, and she would put the box of, you know, the, the feeding box, the feeding toy box, somewhere where the toddler couldn't reach, couldn't get. So I would usually get it down and then I, and, or she would get it before and say, okay, we're about to feed baby. So it made feeding, um, it, it then makes feeding an exciting time rather than, oh, baby's taking my mommy away from me. Um, it's more of a, oh, yay, baby's feeding. So I get to play with these special toys that I only get to play with while mommy is feeding baby. So that's a special tip that I recommend to moms if they have a, um, you know, a, a toddler at home and they need some, some time just to do feedings with their newborn. So, all right, guys, those are my infant packs. I hope that like I said before, I hope these were helpful. I hope you learned something new. And again, Peanut, thank you so much for hosting me. I'm Nina Spears with Baby Chick. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. 